Hey guys, Monks2 here, of course, and today we're covering a certain Yamato replay that I thought was quite fun. So, hope you guys, uh, you know, just sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, uh, Yamato, uh, typically known, we've already covered it before in our other guides, but typically known for being quite a passive playstyle for the majority of uh, the community. You, they do like to play this boat far back, but it really is a great support battleship as well as a uh, great deterrent for uh, any players that want to push in towards these guns. The Yamato has that wonderful feel factor, fear factor, that uh, it could have matched out two, so it could have matched basically every bow in the game, with the exception of a couple hulls, most, most notably G the GK. But even the GK's hull, the very right top part of it is, of the, of the bow, is 32 as well. So the Yamato certainly has a place in its... Um, ability to provide that fear. As a cruiser or battleship player, it's generally quite scary to push towards a ship that kind of match your bow and uh, could do pretty monstrous damage, you know. And uh, Yamato is pretty much, unless you're 100% angled, it's pretty much guaranteed to get at least some damage on you. And if not, a more meaty chunk of damage as well. Um, so yeah, definitely want to be, uh, you know, it's a really good fear factor. Uh, there's a times and place where you do need to play it passively, and this is a good example here. Uh, I'm pretty much the lead ship of, of our battleships here, our battleship core, and it means I just need to kite away. Japanese battleships are typically quite good at kiting away, as even the Yamato as well. Um, the good thing about the Yamato is it's got a very good range, and I can cover these these areas here. Uh, my main goal basically is to pr protect our division mate in the gearing from uh, getting too much action too many battleships, too many cruisers pushing towards that objective because that's really the goal of uh, battleships in you know pretty much every tier. You know you you want to be preventing the cruisers from from pushing up and getting rid of your destroyers while the destroyers spot for you. And you know of course the cruisers are ideal for killing destroyers, so you want to be trying to kill them with your battleship. And realistically. Support from range is what battleships do well. Um, obviously, there's different types and there's brawler versions, like KK of Brandenburg, what we're looking at right now. And, uh, you know, you want to prevent those from getting too close as well because unless they get torped, they're going to be a big problem for the gearing and so forth. So, we're trying to get what we can done. Broadside uh, Brandenburg, though, should be pretty darn effective here. Citadel isn't great, but the, the top back protection isn't great, and for, especially for range, it will mitigate uh, a lot of that. But still, no luck, still some pens. It's very difficult to Citadel uh, Brandenburg because it had, basically has a similar hull based to turpits. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's going to be a bit of a problem there. But uh, our division mate here, Mr. Mickey here, does get rid of the Brandenburg. Always good. Gearing torps are incredibly good. It's just that reload is the only downside to them. And uh, yeah, we've kind of essentially. We've got our B cap here, and now we're going to push, probably push into A cap here. And we need to start getting in position where we can start pushing forward here. We've had to, have to play, we've, we've had to play quite far back, yes, but it's been worth it. And realistically, we've done our job in preventing anyone from getting near the cap that that, that was, uh, you know, being being capped by our team there, getting that bravo cap out of the way, making sure that the enemy does not have that. <clears throat> so. Uh, the Z-23 has popped into range, of course. He is trying to torp us, that's pretty much guaranteed at this point. It's either us or another battleship, but realistically when you're that far back line, I'm supposing you're off to our Pacific ship, and the chances are he's going after us. Luckily though, my division mate is here to help me out, which is amazing. And uh, when you obviously, if he wasn't in that position, he didn't need to go for it, he could have maybe gone for the A cap. But uh, giving it a destroyer is far more valuable than a cap, it's particularly this gauge where we have pretty even points. Again, we'll probably go under here in terms of the points because they've got two caps to one. But uh, giving it this DD is, is quite essential because uh, there's plenty of time left in the game and you can always come back and get a second cap. You know, um, losing a battleship is 100 points difference and giving it that DD, it may not be as much of a point gain, but it certainly is well worth the, the bother here. Now, Z23 has sonar, so p normally a gearing pushing towards Z23 would be a little bit of a questionable play. Uh, uh, the gearing's full health though, so he's, will he's probably willing to take a couple of hits for it though, but because of the support the battleship's providing, with AKA myself, 
um, it's more than it's actually ever very complete. As long as you're keeping the guy, the C23 spotted, or making him shoot something or the other. There we go, he pops up. He's not very healthy. To be honest, uh, you know, Mickey doesn't really need my help. But we're just going to fire this big Just get him off the board. We don't want to risk it anymore. You never know. Uh, gearing could have got torped or anything like that. We've got the, as long as there's a torps coming in. Thankfully he dodges this. He actually takes one, that's unfortunate. But again, it was better that we took a shot now and just guarantee that kill. Um, obviously, kill securing is a definite thing. There's no such thing as kill stealing in this game. Uh, we can all, you know, moan at occasionally, but at the end of the day, it's all about the win. That 50% bonus is the biggest bonus you'll ever get in this, in this game. It's all about getting that win. Not necessarily about getting the highest average games or getting a certain number of kills. It's all about getting that that W, really. And, uh, you know, getting these kills, getting the ships off the board is what wins games. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of games that happen where the entire enemy team are on very low health but no one's actually killed because no one finishes off targets. They're all like, I want the big mitty damage numbers and it's sometimes just not worth it. It's better to just secure the kills and get them killed and get them off the board so they're no longer a threat to yourself and other players. So you really want to get and clean up the targets whenever you can. Um, but your main focus is getting the priority targets off the board or doing damage to priority targets. Like, you know, if you're a battleship, you want to get rid of destroyers, that's your primary focus. It's the same here in cruisers again. Um, you know, you want to kill things that can kill you as well in the selfish side of it. But again, it's not really selfish because you're keeping yourself alive for the benefit of your team. Basically, you know, um, get kills when you can. I mean, if kill if targets are going like that, I guarantee there's no point shooting. Don't waste your salvo, but, you know, just... Make sure that the boards are clear. clear. Clear the pieces off the board so they're no longer effective, you know. Anyway, uh, so we're going to push into A here because make it for lost time because uh, obviously the gearing did detour here to help us out with that C23. And, you know, we pushed down to Alpha, we've got that cap. And realistically, our best bow, uh, best choice here is just to go for C and guarantee this win. And we could do chasing that one battleship to the edge of the map down there. I think it's a Montana, I believe. But uh, honestly, it's not worth it. Um, we've only got a couple points lead. One battleship kill could sway it. But if we're down there, wasting our time, we're not going to get enough time to get back to our team and we could lose potentially three to ships there. So realistically, it's not worth it. We're just going to go to Charlie. And uh, I believe that's what our me and Matosian were discussing there. Just getting the Charlie cap and guaranteeing this potential win. Still not over yet. Montana, though, fortunately, while we're sailing away, does pop into range because, again, if you start, if you play the kiters game, then uh, you know uh, they'll they'll kite you to the end of the map. But if you just leave them alone, they'll have to come back and creep towards you, and you know, that's when you can punish them <clears throat> when you think when they don't think you're paying attention. You know, doesn't it, it also helps when you're not being spotted as well. So he's not happy with that, and the Z23 has caught up to him because, uh, you know, the Z23 has not been spotted, so he doesn't think he's been chased. Obviously, he's been spotted, but he's in Montana, so detection is not really exactly his 40. Uh, we're going to do another meaty salvo, potentially. The grouping looks really good, but it might be a miss here. Oh, no, just a little bit shut over him there. And decisions here, we've got Alaska. We can't shoot at him because of island cover, which is great for us. He's not going to shoot at us. We've got Iowa shooting at us, but we're happily angled. We're fine. Uh, Yamato can 100% angle, you just gotta be careful with that cheapness. Yes, but it's more of a problem when you give a certain, unless you're about facing him. Montana's a bit more scary threat because we're giving him a lot more broadside, but we're kind of lucky in that one. Iowa take a meaty hit there. We really want to try and uh, get as much as I can done to both targets. <clears throat> so we fire the front guns on Iowa and then the rear turrets on the Montana. Uh, realistically, I'd like to swap it around, but. You know, just the, the church versus the Yamato is not great, so we really need to get our efforts there. So we're going to fire in Iowa here. Montana's low here. We're going to try and make a shot, though I think the torpedoes do get him. That's unfortunate. But we do finish off in Iowa. Missed opportunity for a double strike, but hey, whatever, that's how it goes. C-23 is torps. We're going to land there, and, you know, to be fair, I didn't really need to fire that shot. But again, I've got nothing else to shoot at anyway, so might as well. You never know. <clears throat> so... Uh, Alaska and Kabrosk and Lenin. That's what we have left to fight. Now, at this point, we need to push here. We don't need to push, but we've got two point lead. Uh, three versus four, so we have a uh, point ship advantage as well. 
So we're just going to try and push in here and make sure that we guarantee this win. We've got a lot of health to play with, so we definitely need to, you know, use that influence and swing it around. You don't, you know, in battles people play way too passively and uh, you got to remember that um, you can't take your ship HP with your next battle. You have to use it. <clears throat> Otherwise, it's just wasted, wasted hit points. You know, uh, tanking for the team is not necessarily always the best play. But if you have the health and you'd rather take the hit than your than your other ship mates, shall I say, you know, if there's a squishy cruiser about, you know, why not be the battleship that pushes forward and takes the hits? Like I don't mind taking these hits in the lane. That Lenin salvo is a less is, is a salvo that is missed from my other battleship who may not be as tanky and potentially even the destroyer. Because you don't know what the player will do all the time. We're gonna aim up in Lenin by the way, because he does have in fact have the icebreaker. But his top deck is not uh, protected by our arm by his armor scheme, which is indeed 32 at the top. So again, knowing your armor will help you out with these games, and you'll know where to hit certain targets. <clears throat> so yeah, the overmatch is quite strong, but uh, again, careful angling will help you out. But uh, at the end of the day, if you know where you're shooting, you could still get some reliable hits, but uh, accuracy in the Yamato sometimes don't mix. They did nerf the dispersion on these guns. I honestly think they should just nerf the damage and the torturous even more, so it's very glacial. So, you know, you kind of know where it's going to be. Uh, Lenin's trying to do his wee last attempt here, but we turned 100% in time, make sure that we don't expose our cheek weakness, and we just go straight and bow on, and we finish off that Lenin here. So. Uh, now we've got left, you've just got that Alaska left, and uh, yeah, we've got four kills. I've just noticed that really. Um, so yeah, I think we're just going to go for it at this point. Uh, my plan is literally to push the lead in, into Alaska. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, we're just going to move in here. Uh, Alaska pops his radar. I mean, he knows we're coming, he saw his last there, it makes no difference. Uh, our division mate did die, I believe. Yes, he did. Um, that's unfortunate. we still got two ships left. It doesn't matter. All we need to do is we need to guarantee to kill the Alaska, and we're guaranteed to win. We don't even need to kill the Alaska, we just need to make sure he doesn't kill the rest of our team. Uh, the DD is quite close, so we can't really risk letting him live. Uh, the battleship is over on A, but... Again, this is an Alaska, it's, it's, it's basically a battleship killer, as well as a cruiser killer and a destroyer killer. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty darn broken in Alaska. Just, yeah. Also, meet the Citadels as well. <clears throat> 32 bow on Alaska. Uh, very surprising that we can't get a juicy Citadel right through into those barbettes, but no such luck. Maybe at 2.5 kilometers away? 2.9, sorry. 2.64? Yeah. Maybe under three kilometers we can get a citadel here. Let's just aim right below, a little bit below, well, just even below the waterline. Let's just try there. Bit of a questionable shot. Um, we kind of hit the water, we actually hit the armor belt, which just straight up bounced our shells. And we've had to go for the ram, but he's happy to accept it. And let's just slow down to the very end, because uh, there we go there. Thank you for the diehard very much. Chick <laughs> uh, stick scars in glory last forever. So yeah. Um, it's a perfect example of Yamato playing carefully at the start and really pushing in near the end. You need to use your help pool in these games, even if you are a battleship that is more suited towards uh, support or sh shooting from the back. You really need to use your help pool, guys, and that's a prime example there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you want more, and have a lovely day, guys. Bye for now.